All right, we are at FAQ number 61. And the question comes up, what about Matthew chapter 5 through 7 in the life of a Christian? Now, Matthew chapter 5 through 7 is the Sermon on the Mount, as well as the what people call the Beatitudes. We're going to look at it here. And what part do they play in the life of a Christian? Okay, start at Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor. Here's where you get into the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Uh, and it goes down through, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And, uh, and then it goes down, there's a couple more there. Uh, well, we'll look at verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, now what is the kingdom of heaven? If you're new to this channel and you don't know, uh, go over to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. It says here, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, the popular teaching among a lot of the people out there that are non-dispensational, they will say that the kingdom of heaven is where God is. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12 debunks that. Uh, nobody's, no violent person is going to take the realm where God dwells by force. I don't think so. Okay, what is the kingdom of heaven? It is the physical, earthly, visible kingdom. Only one book of the Bible, in your King James Bible, I can't speak for the rest, but only one book of the Bible in the King James Version has this term, kingdom of heaven. Okay, elsewhere it is often referred to as kingdom of God, but again, they're not the same thing because kingdom of God can also be a spiritual kingdom. And I've talked about that in other studies. I can't get into it here. Um, but the kingdom of heaven, every time the kingdom of heaven shows up, it is always a reference to the physical kingdom on the earth. Okay, and that's why you have all this teaching of replacement theology, and all of its various forms, be it Hebrew roots, cult movement, or, or a lot of this other stuff, they're all trying to take the kingdom by force. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. When Jesus Christ showed up the first time, he initially offered the kingdom of heaven. That's why he's going out preaching the kingdom of heaven. He's preaching the king is here in the person of Jesus Christ, and he's going out and he's saying, will you accept me as your Messiah? Will you accept me as your king? It was offered. Okay? They rejected. So Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7 is what basically is going to happen in that millennial kingdom. All right? And you say, well, how do you know that? Look at verse 5 again there. Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Is that true for today? No. Nobody that's meek is going to inherit the earth today. You're not going to get the kingdom of heaven. If you go over to Jerusalem, which is the headquarters of the city, which I'll show you that real quick. Look, look over at verse 35. Nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Again, Jesus Christ is there. He's the king. He's offering the kingdom. All right. And so nobody's going to go over to Jerusalem today in meekness and say, I'm here to inherit the earth. It's not going to happen. You know what happens? The violent take Jerusalem by force. There's fighting all the time over there in Israel. You know, that's what's going on here. And um, but it goes down through there. You say, when did this? Well, then how did if if it doesn't happen today and it didn't happen in the past? Well, how can it happen in the future? Turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Um, Verse 31, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. Where's that throne at? Where's the city of the great King? Jerusalem. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And He shall set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the King say unto them on His right hand, Come ye blessed of My Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of of the world. 
And he goes down through there and, and it's all works that they're being judged for. And it's all things that you can do in meekness, feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, you know, things like that. You're feeding and doing those things in meekness so you inherit the earth. This is when it's going to be fulfilled. Matthew 25 has not happened yet. Matthew 25 is the judgment of the nations. This happens after the time of Jacob's trouble. God scourges that Jewish population, the nation of Israel, scourges them one last time. And at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, those ones that are meek, they get through it in meekness. They endure to the end and they do, they're doing good works and things for the Lord. They'll go into the kingdom. But those that do not are cast into the lake of fire. But the question comes up, can we apply any of this to us today? Well, anything in the Bible, anything at all, from Genesis to Revelation, has to be compared with the Pauline epistles. Okay, Because the Pauline epistles are the instructions that are given to the body of Christ. And so if you can find certain things in the Pauline epistles that line up with the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes and things like that, then you say, okay, I can do those things. And let me show you one of the most important verses of Scripture um, in your King James Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, so all Scripture... That means Genesis to Revelation, it's there, it's, it's given by inspiration of God, we know that, and it's profitable, profitable for doctrine, of course you have to be careful, they're rightly dividing the word of truth, uh, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, what's instruction in righteousness? Turn back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Is it good to be a peacemaker? Or do we have to be militant and arrogant and make people angry, you know, and that's all we ever want to do? Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. And see, I'm going to show you how to compare the two. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Okay, so are we supposed to be peace, peacemakers? Are we supposed to be meek in our presentation of the gospel? Yes. Does that mean that we should be doormats? No, it doesn't mean that. And keep in mind again, Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7 you have a situation where this is going to be in the millennial kingdom is when this thing is going to be fulfilled. And so the devil is going to be in the, bound in the bottomless pit for that thousand year period. So you're not dealing with Satan and, and all the deception that goes on today. The father of lies is in the bottomless pit for that time period. Things are going to be a lot different. So, you know, it's, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot uh, better ability to be peacemakers and to be meek in that time period. But now, let me show you an example of how you don't use Matthew chapter 5. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, verse 42. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Okay? So in that time period, you're supposed to be very, very giving. Now, today, uh, you need to be a little careful with that. See if I can find the verse here. I'm trying to think of where this one at, is at. Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter three, uh, verse ten. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Okay, and it goes on to say in verse 11, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now, you know, there's a thing of, okay, if somebody needs something, you can help them out. But in the Pauline epistles, instructions for us as Christians, you're not supposed to have a system like welfare. Okay, that's not supposed to be there. They're supposed to, people are supposed to work. And if they don't work, 
it's, you know, it says there in verse 10, it, we commanded you. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. So again, you know, see, if you have somebody that comes up to you and says, hey, I need something, you're not supposed to turn them away in the millennial kingdom. Why? Well, their motives are going to be a lot more pure, you know, in that millennial kingdom time there. They're, they're not being deceived by Satan because Satan's bound and in the bottomless pit. So you got to be real careful of that type of stuff. Um, but, you know, you go through Matthew chapter 5 through 7, and there's a lot of good things in uh, these chapters that can definitely be applied for instruction in righteousness, uh, for doctrine, reproof, correction. So it's, you know, 2 Timothy 2.15, the admonition to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, it's that is you can't disobey that and expect to, to be right with God. Um, I mean, if, if you have somebody who is genuinely saved and they struggle over this thing of dispensational teaching and they're like back and forth, well, I don't know, maybe the whole Bible's mine or court for me or whatever, they're just going to make a mess of their lives and they're never going to amount to anything. Um, if you want to be uh, used of the Lord, you have to be dispensational. I mean, there's there's no other option. It's just... I don't understand how people can't get this, you know, unless they're lost. I mean, you know, then you get these people that I'm not saying, you know, somebody gets saved and they really don't understand dispensationalism. That's one thing. But you get these these teachers, these false teachers that come out and attack dispensational, you know, teaching. And they're and they're just like, I'm going, is this guy really saved? You know, I don't know. And, you, you know, I've written back and forth with some of these heretics in there and they just will not, you know, they will not bend one inch. They will not admit to any proper divisions in Scripture. You know, and then they end up coming out and they preach multiple sermons against dispensational teaching. And I'm going, okay, you know, it's a problem. But um, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, yeah, definitely there's some really good things in there, uh, instruction and righteousness wise. Uh, doctrine, be careful. Um, a lot of lost liberals love Matthew 5 through 7 because it's. It's the kingdom of heaven thing. And again, uh, you talk to a lot of these heretics, they will tell you that they are trying to bring in the kingdom. And the way that they're trying to do it is without Jesus Christ. And they're trying to steal things from, you know, the Jewish people. And it's just, it's a bad situation. So a lot of lost people like Matthew 5 through 7. Um, and But that doesn't mean that we as Christians, our reaction then should be to totally hate Matthew chapter 5 through 7 and Stay away from it because it breeds heresy or something. No, no. Rightly divide the word of truth. So that's going to be it for this FAQ. Uh, good question.